Welcome TLC family. I'm Pastor Shauna Jacobs from the Life Church Avenel, and thank you so much for joining me tonight for online Bible study, where we get to discover more of what God has done for us and has in store for us. Amen. You know, so many believers, they never grow beyond their initial salvation. They come to know Jesus as their Savior, and they think that all that means is, okay, I don't have to go to hell now. When I pass away in this body, then I will go to be with the Lord. And they never, ever study anything more in the Word of God about what that salvation provided, where really, you know, Jesus did it all for us. He provided all things that pertain to life and godliness and so everything that we needed done spiritually for for us is done everything that we needed to be successful in the natural here in this life is done and so we need to get into the word and discover what that is so we can set our faith on it and allow god to work in that area of our lives he has so many good things for us and so many believers miss out right I, I remember back when I was 15, 16 years old, I started seeing some of these things about God wanting to prosper us and wanting good things for us. And I remember simply reading some of Psalms 23 to a friend of mine, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I said, hey, you know that word want means lack, right? And I was trying to explain to my friend, hey, God doesn't want us to lack. He wants us to have more than what we need. And she looked at it and she was not convinced at that moment. She was like, Shauna, I don't think that means what you think it means. <laughs> now, when you study that chapter, that is such an amazing, Psalms 23, a, an amazing demonstration of how God wants to take care of you, lead you into the green pastures. If you imagine a shepherd and a sheep, right? He's the shepherd leading us into those green pastures where we're gonna get the good food that nourishes us, right? Everything that we need. He sets a table, like a feast table, um, for us in the presence of our enemies. So even when people try to do us wrong, right, we've got this abundance that God has supplied for us. Um, he's, his rod and his staff guides us and protects us. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear evil because he is with us. God is with you and he's for you. Amen? Amen. Um, and so we've been talking about the favor of God. I told you that, you know, as we've been looking at different practical areas of letting God work in our lives, we talked about marriage and family. We're moving on to this new unit I'm calling favor and finances, right? And I want to stir up your expectancy that God has more for you in this area. He wants you to expect bigger in your job. And I'm talking like promotions coming your way special recognition and benefits coming your way not because you know you deserve it in particular or you're just such a good person no because God likes you he approves of you I, I need to read you the definition of favor again because this is just so good favor means approval support or liking for someone or something and it's an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual. And so can we allow God to be kind to us in an extravagant way? Because that's what he wants. That's what he's asking. Hey, would you just let me do my thing? Let me bless you. Let me love you. And so many of us are just the stubborn child. No, I'm going to do it my own way, right? And God's like, oh. Come on, boy. Come on, girl. Let me love you. Let me help you. And so the favor of God, we were talking about last week, it says um, in Psalms 512, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. And I was trying to have you picture, get that mental image, right, um, that God has this hedge of protection around you, and that's his favor, his kindness towards you. So even when people try to attack and say things about you and do things that might put you at a disadvantage, the favor of God 
protects you. And so we need to get our mouth on this, right? We need to line up our words with what the Word of God says about us to allow God that avenue of faith, entrance into our lives to do what He wants to do. Amen. So we had just barely started last week talking about examples of favor. And, uh, oh, I guess I have to give you our creative title for this week, right? Can't keep a man with favor down. And I say man, but I mean man and woman. That's why I put the picture here, you know, mankind kind of thing. Um, but one of the, the examples that we're going to focus on specifically and kind of follow throughout the whole story is going to be a man. And so anyway, that just made sense. Can't keep a man with favor down. No matter what comes against him, he pops to the top. Right? The favor of God promotes, the favor of God supports, the favor of God gives an advantage to him. And so we started looking at some examples last week, and we just barely looked at the New Testament examples, how Mary, the mother of Jesus, was favored by God, how Jesus grew in favor with God and men, and then the disciples, the early church, they had favor with all the people. And what did that produce? The church kept growing. More and more people were drawn to Jesus, the good news of the gospel, because of the favor of God that was demonstrated in the disciples' lives. Hallelujah. Favor is not just, you walking in the favor of God is not just for you. It's for people around, it's for your family, it's for your co-workers, it's for your friends, it's for even those random people that you run into at the gas station or the grocery store. They see the favor of God in you and they think, man, what is different about them? They've got it going on. I want what they've got because of the favor of God. So it's not just about you, right? But God likes you so much that he would have done it even if it was just about you. Hallelujah. And so let's look at um, Exodus 11 next as we're going through some examples of what the favor of God did. And so this is um, the children of Israel. They had been slaves in Egypt for many, many, many years. And God sends Moses on the scene to deliver the children of Israel. He says to the Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh, his heart was hardened. And so there were plagues and different signs and wonders that came upon Egypt um, to, to influence Pharaoh's heart so that the people would be freed, right? Because that was God's intention was for them to to move out of captivity and towards the promised land. And so here in Exodus 11 verse 2 it says, Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor articles of silver and articles of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of the people. Now we have a couple different you know, forms of favor happening. I guess we'll talk about Moses first since that was the last thing we read. But Moses was promoted in the sight of of Pharaoh's servants and the sight of the people. Moses was favored and put into a position of prominence because of the favor of God. And then notice the specific reference to the instructions to the children of Israel who were slaves. Let me remind you of their position in society. They were to go ask their masters, every man and woman, for gold and silver. They were to go ask, a slave asking their master for gold and silver. I don't know, I, I just feel like if, if I was in that position, if I was one of those, the children of Israel in that day, I'd be kind of like, are you crazy? You know that master that was beating me last week, you want me to go ask for gold and silver from them? Yeah, that was the instruction from the Lord. And what happened when they did? They found favor in the sight of their masters, the Egyptians. They left Egypt rich. They had all kinds of gold and silver and precious items that were given to them by the Egyptians and they took those things with them. Think about it, even in the, 
in the desert, guys, and this was an act of disobedience, but in the desert, when Moses went up on the mountain and the children of Israel started to rebel, they had so much gold and silver that they could all like throw some, throw some other extra together and um, melt it down and make a golden calf to worship. Like they had all of this, um, this riches, this wealth that was given to them because of the favor of God. And so that kind of refutes some people who might say, well, God isn't interested in you having stuff. Well, he was interested in these slaves leaving captivity with gold and silver. They had stuff. They had wealth. And that was part of the, the, the evidence that God had favored them, that God liked them and was being kind toward them. Right? So, wow. You know, when we were going over um, some points I had given you from Reverend Jerry Savell last week about the 10 things favor does for you, here's some evidence, right, of, of those things. We saw restoration of everything that the enemy had stolen from them, and we saw honor in the midst of their adversaries. Both of these things were it was what favor produced for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Now, speaking of the children of Israel, I want to go to Deuteronomy 33:23. And so at this point, we're skipping ahead a little bit in the story where Moses had already led the children of Israel out of captivity and now the promised land is available to them. And Moses was kind of speaking a blessing over each of the tribes before he departed. Um, and so it says here, Deuteronomy 33, 23, and of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess the west and the south and so we see here that the favor of god was to produce increased assets for this tribe particularly real estate they were given land because of the favor of god wow right you know god can go beyond sometimes what we what we can imagine for ourselves um, and he wants us to to um, he wants to work with our imagination right to increase our expectancy but sometimes God will offer things that I want to use the term that'll blow your mind you're just like wow you want that for me Lord you know who am I and he's like you're my child and yes I want that for you right he wants to bless you increased assets even real estate hallelujah some of you need to grab a hold of that with your faith because you need some real estate to fulfill the plan of that god has for your life and your you know i want to say false humility oh who am i i don't need anything your false humility is holding back the plan of god because of that attitude because of your lack of expectancy for land and assets God's not able to do as much through you as he wants to. And so let's, uh, let's make that little switch. Let's make that little correction right now and say, yeah, Lord, whatever you have for me, as big as you want, Lord, I receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, let's go to Ruth next. Ruth 2, 11 through 13. <clears throat> now, I'll give you some backstory again here. Ruth um, was a foreigner from Moab, and she married um, a, a man from Israel who had been kind of, um, not exiled, but they, they fled Israel because there was a famine. So she married this man, and then he died, and, uh, and his father, all the men in the family are dead. And so her mother-in-law traveled back to Israel. She chose to give up her own family and religion and all of that and traveled back with her mother-in-law Naomi to Israel and then they faced some hardship there right they had to she had to go out and tr try to get some food and make some money and that kind of thing for her mother-in-law to support the family and she was put in a position of favor and let's look at this Ruth 2.11, And Boaz answered her and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother in the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work, and a full reward be given to you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Then she said, Let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. 
And so Boaz was the man, actually a very prominent man in that society who owned the land that Ruth had went out to glean wheat from. And the favor of God surrounded her so much. You hear the blessing that he's speaking over her, right? Honoring her for her sacrifice and all the effort that she's made to support her mother-in-law. And if you know the story, Boaz ends up marrying Ruth, right? And, and so she rises to a position of prominence and is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing, right? Because Ruth just simply chose to follow God instead of the foreign gods and her own culture and everything. Man, the favor of God just surrounded her and things just worked out for her when it seemed impossible, when it seemed unlikely. God worked it in her favor, brought her a godly man for a husband. Amen. All the single ladies out there, if you're wanting a godly husband, man, the favor of God can put you in the right place at the right time. So you find that man. Amen. Hallelujah. And let's go to Esther next. So Esther 2, <clears throat> verses 15 through 17. And so at this point in... Um, in this country where Esther was living, the king had rejected his queen. She had done something to make him angry, and he said, fine, I'm going to find myself a new queen. And so Esther, along with a bunch of other girls, were brought to be prepared to be presented to the king so he could choose a queen. And so it says in Esther 2.15, And when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abigail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the women, advised. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. How many who saw her? All who saw her, right? So Esther was taken to the king into his royal palace in the 10th month, which is the month of uh, Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight, more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen, queen instead of Vashti. Hallelujah. And so in Esther's situation, she was favored above all the other girls. This reminds me of Mary, right? How God had passed over all these others and favored Mary because of her heart towards God. And now we see the same kind of situation with Esther too, right? And so she was made, she was given prominence and preferential treatment because of the favor of God. Not only that, if we were to continue with the story, she was given her petitions granted um, by the civil authorities, even an ungodly king. He was not a believer in God as of yet, right? We see that story develop later. Um, but she was granted a petition, even by him. And then even the policy that the king had been tricked into setting out that would have had all of um, uh, the people of Israel, all of Esther's people destroyed, like basically genocide was going to happen. Because of the favor of God upon Esther's life, that policy was reversed. And those who had meant to do her and her people evil, they were destroyed instead. Wow. Again, these situations that might seem impossible in our minds, God is able to do amazing things, right? Because He likes you. He approves of you. He wants you to prosper. Are you starting to believe that yet? Amen. Grab a hold of that. God likes you. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> now I want to go to the story of Joseph because... You know, of all of the examples of favor in the Bible, Joseph always strikes me as so, so powerful, an example of how you can't keep a man with the favor of God down or a woman with the favor of God. You just, no matter what the circumstances look like, God just pops them to the top. He supports them in such a way and, and, and pours out his kindness towards them in such a way that, that no one else can do anything about it, <laughs> no matter what's coming against them. So let's look at Joseph's story. I'm going to start in Acts 7 verses 9 and 10, and then we're going to go back to Genesis and kind of look at some key verses tracing through the story. So Acts 7 verses 9 and 10. It says, And the patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt, 
<clears throat> but God was with him and delivered him out of all of his trouble troubles how many how many troubles all right can you say it with me say all all delivered him out of all of his troubles there was not one trouble that Joseph wasn't delivered out of by God and it says and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house and so these verses kind of like in a nutshell tell the story of Joseph so we're gonna go back and kind of break it apart a little bit more but because of the favor of God Joseph was delivered he was promoted to a top position in the country hallelujah and so let's start in Genesis 39 1 through 4 okay now Joseph was one of many sons he was favored by his father his father gave him a special robe with many colors and it made his brothers jealous not only that but Joseph started to hear from God he would have visions and dreams and get words from God um, about what his future was going to look like and this promotion that was going to take place and so when he told his brothers hey I'm gonna you know be in this prominent position they didn't accept that very well right and so they ended up um, selling him as a slave and so they saw they actually initially intended on killing him but one of the brothers had a kind of a soft heart towards him and said hey let's not instead of killing him let's just sell him as a slave instead and then we make some money right <laughs> and so off he goes into Egypt as a slave now here's where we pick up Genesis 39 1 now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh captain of the guard an Egyptian bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand so Joseph found favor in his sight and served him and he made him overseer of his house and all that he had he put under his authority now talk about another unlikely situation right you seem least likely for the recognition least likely for the promotion and all of a sudden the favor of God influences people for your good and this is what happened to Joseph he's like in the lowest position possible right he's been sold as a slave but because his his owner his master looked and saw wow everything that he does it's prospering look at you know how how much Joseph is benefiting my house even in a slaves position so he promoted him to overseer of the house he was in charge of the whole house and the business that was conducted and all of that kind of thing Joseph was in charge supernatural promotion here hallelujah so evil the evil that was meant for Joseph was turned out for his good because of the favor of God now what happens next <clears throat> now we know that um, Potiphar his master's wife took a liking to Joseph right and she tried to seduce him wanted her him to sleep with her and he saw the warning signs and ran out of there right and she grabbed his coat and had like some evidence as a something against him to say hey he was in my room and you know she lied um, about him and so of course Potiphar became angry and said you betrayed me Joseph and threw him in prison so now he's in an Egyptian prison what happens next though Genesis 39 20 to 23 then Joseph's master took him and put him into prison a place where the king's prisoners were confined and he was there in the prison but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison whatever they did there it was his doing the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and whatever he did the Lord made it prosper hallelujah this is sounding familiar already right again Joseph is put in what seems like an impossible situation now before he was a slave and that seemed low now he's a slave and a prisoner in prison so I guess it could have got, gotten worse right it got worse um, but 
God was with him, it says, and promoted him, so now he's in charge of the prison. You can't keep a man with favor down. Hallelujah. Promotion pops him to the top, the favor of God, the supernatural kindness of God with God and men just causes him to prosper. And so we've got evil was turned out for his good, and now we've got, again, supernatural promotion even in this prison situation. Now what happens next? We've got to keep going here. <clears throat> And so, um, while he's in prison, he's in charge of the prison, he comes across a couple, a couple people that Pharaoh, like the king, had thrown into prison. And they were having some troubling dreams. And really, God was trying to show them what was going to happen next in their lives, right? And so, um, they were troubled by the dreams. I don't know what this means. You know, it's, I've been worried about this. So, Joseph says, okay, you know, tell me the dream. Maybe God will give me the interpretation. I can tell you what, what's, what he's trying to tell you, right? And so he was able to say, hey, this is what this dream means. This is what that me dream means. And it happened exactly as he said. The one man was executed. The other one was restored back to his position in the king's house, in the Pharaoh's house. And so then it, after a bit of time, um, Pharaoh started having these troubling dreams about the future of the nation. And um, the man who w met Joseph in prison and was restored to his position said, Oh yeah, I know this guy named Joseph. And he's like overseer of the prison. And he, he can interpret dreams. Like he told me what was going to happen in my life and it happened. So Pharaoh called for Joseph and told him, you know, the dream he had been having. Joseph interpreted it, told him the plan that was going to happen in the future, what God was trying to show him. So there's all the context, okay? So Genesis, we're now we're in chapter 41, verses 37 to 41. So it said, So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his, all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one um, as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over all my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Wow. Okay, let's recap. He was sold into slavery and promoted to head of a household. He was thrown into prison, promoted to overseer of the prison. Now he's brought before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh makes him second in charge of all of Egypt. Supernatural promotion, right? And so, you know, God, the favor of God surrounded Joseph and protected him at every stage. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned it, it for good and promoted him in the process. And it said, it kept saying over and over again, everything he put his hand to, God made it prosper. Guys, how much more you and I as a child of God? You know, Joseph wasn't even born again, right? Jesus hadn't come yet. He hadn't paid the price yet. He was a servant of God. But in our position, it's even greater than that of Joseph's. As a born again child of God, of his nature, of his, of his substance, right? Made his righteousness. Oh my goodness, right? Oh, supernatural promotion and protection. And so what did this allow then, right? God protected him and promoted him. And what did that enable Joseph to do? Well, we know next in Genesis 47, right? The famine that um, was predicted hit the land really hard and the surrounding lands. And Joseph's family was um, uh, impacted by this. They were starving. And so they came to Egypt because God had shown Joseph a plan, something really wise to save up food in the previous previous years, so when the famine hit, they would have more than enough, not just for themselves, but to sell to others. And so Joseph's family comes um, to get food, to survive. 
And so because of the position that God had promoted Joseph to, to, he was able to save his family's life. Wow. Again, guys, the favor of God is not just for you personally, but impacts those around you, your loved ones, your co-workers, your friends, the people that you just seem to randomly run into. The favor of God upon your life is for them too. So they can, they can be protected. They can be preserved because you're there able to speak the gospel. You're able to there to pray for them and influence um, their lives and impact their lives with what God has for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Supernatural favor, approval from God towards you to have you expect more. Come on, guys. Let's increase our vision a little bit. You know, I told you this unit's called Favor and Finances. And the purpose of our last couple of lessons was to show you how much God likes you. And so it's not far-fetched when we say, hey, God wants to bless you. Look at how he promoted other people throughout the Bible. He promoted them. He increased them. He gave them gold and silver and lands. How much more his child, you, right? And so let's expect bigger this week. Hallelujah. We'll continue with this more next week and start to talk about, you know, God's plan for our finances and how he wants you to always have more than enough. And so you guys have a blessed week.